And also in Washington is Andrew O'Connell. He's CEO of Guidepost Solutions. He's a former Secret Service agent and former federal prosecutor. Andrew, good morning to you. Good morning. What do you make of these new rules? Well, I think these rules really just put into print uh, principles that have been around for a long time in the Secret Service. I mean, the Secret Service goes back 150 years, and the culture really is a culture of professionalism. And I think the American people have seen that uh, for a long time. But Andrew, I have you to know, ask you, do you, do you really yeah. think those principles have been in place given what we've seen over the past couple weeks? Yes, they have been. The general, principle, general principles have been in place. The specifics that you see in the, uh, in the newly released guidelines are new, but the principles behind them are not new, and agents have been expected to follow those principles, again, since the beginning of the Secret Service, and I think they have. You know, why, uh, why, but why have they not been followed in, um, in Colombia and potentially other places? Well, I mean, uh, again, there are allegations that I don't know what, uh, I have no first-hand knowledge of what happened down there, and there's going to be an investigation what hap uh, of what happened, but certainly over the last 150 years, these principles have been followed. It's just that from time to time, as with any agency, people use bad judgment, they make mistakes, and it gets investigated, and hopefully something is learned from it. These new rules include no boozy nights, no racy bars, and then in addition to that, you also have this chaperone issue where a chaperone will now accompany Secret Service members. How are the agents going to react to that? Well, that certainly is something that's new and uh, uh, surprising to see that, uh, in effect, you'll, you'll have somewhat of a chaperone on these car planes going to foreign countries with the agents. I think the agents, f for the most part, that have been doing their job for a long time aren't going to be affected by having somebody uh, looking over their shoulder. Are they uh, offended by it? Are they offended by it? I suppose some who, uh, uh, I suppose some would be, uh, the professionals, and you hope that they're all professionals. I don't know if uh, offended is the right word, but certainly uh, concerned that uh, this is necessary. Andrew, does it make a difference taking these uh, ethics classes online versus in person? Uh, I think it does. I think, uh, but you have to remember, this is, I think, enhanced uh, uh, guidelines. The Secret Service has in-person training from the day you're sworn in, through training and throughout your career. You're constantly being trained, and these principles are supposed to be reinforced through that one-on-one -on -one training. This online training, I think, supplements that training. You've made it from the Secret Service to the private sector, forming your own security group. Do you think for these members who have stepped down, who have been asked to leave the Secret Service, that that's a possibility for them, that they can go into private work, perhaps make more money, and work for public companies, private companies in the United States? Well, it really depends on what the outcome of the investigation is. Certainly, folks with criminal uh, histories can't uh, have uh, uh, the type of company that we have get licenses for investigations and security work. But for improper conduct, for lapses in judgment, you know, I don't think that's held against folks for forever. But certainly, we need to see exactly what happened, who did what, and that will really determine, you know, what the opportunities are for these agents if they leave the circus, Secret Service. Andrew O'Connell, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it.